five, four, three. Hey guys, it's Mia, and in case you didn't get the announcement, the dance collab, we are currently not posting videos on it due to the lack of members. So, um, we are holding auditions for the dance collab, and I will put links below to those videos if you're interested in auditioning. So for now, I'll be posting my dance collab videos on this channel, so be sure to spread the word to those who haven't found out that I am now posting my um, dance collab videos on this channel every Friday. So, today's video is about performance etiquette. So I plan to have this video about like audience etiquette at a performance and then I'll have an etiquette video um, for performers. So this is mainly towards an audience, so if you're going to a ballet or a classical performance, um, this is stuff like dance recitals, ballets, um, even school band, chorus, or drama shows. Um, this might even count for the circus. This, however, does not apply to, like, rock concert or music festivals. Those are the only two things I can think of. This is more like, um, things you pay a lot of money to go see, like Disney on Ice. I know that's, um, really popular right now. And, um, so I'm just basically going over this because it can distract audience members and it can be very offending to, um, other people, you know what I mean? Just people in general because some people just get so offended at things. Tips. Okay, so don't get up in the middle of a performance. That is, like, the worst thing you can do. The worst thing you can do. Um, it is it just, if you need to leave to go pee, or if you really hate the show, you need to leave in the middle of a number. Um, I know in ballets, like, sometimes, um, even, like, plays, there's a scene change and you can get up while they're changing the set. The best time to leave, however, is intermission, which is always during some kind of, I mean, I've had it at chorus concerts and stuff. There's always some form of intermission, especially if it's long, and that is the best time to leave because um, the lights are, you know, they aren't dimmed anymore, so you can see the aisles better, and you're not blocking people's view. So this mainly distracts people. You're blocking people's view. You're getting up. Um, and this can also kind of offend the dancers, um, because you may, sorry, like I just kicked my table, you might not think that the dancers can't see, like you might think that the dancers can't see the audience, and um, they can, they they can't really make out people, but they can definitely silu see silhouettes of people, so um, if you get up and leave, they might think, oh my god, they hate the show and they're leaving, so um, just, yeah, and um, my like example for this is the Rockettes, if you go to their website, um, it actually says, you know, on um, the frequently asked questions, what if I arrive late to the performance? And it said, we won't let you in, we'll wait for an appropriate time to let you into the theater so you don't distract the audience and the performers. And um, you probably, I didn't put this in here, but while we're talking about distractions, flash photography, not a good idea. Most of this is not loud photography, but flash photography is definitely not a good idea. Don't bring your own food to a performance. Most places don't allow food um, inside, like, the um, auditorium. Um, but if they do, they usually want you to buy their food. That's the reason they sell it there. And, um, you know, people sneak food all the time in movie theaters. Um, but I'm talking mainly, like, at classical performances. Um, if they don't allow food, it can be a distraction if you're the only person in that theater eating food and if it's loud. Um, it's going to distract the audience members and they're going to start complaining. And it can also offend the owners of the theater because um, you didn't buy their food or they work hard to keep it clean and if you get their floors dirty they're going to be seriously PO'd so you don't want that to happen. A good example of that is at a Christmas concert a couple years ago. I live in like a very country town, I'm trying to put it nicely. There's a bunch of hicks. <laughs> that wasn't very nice but that's basically it. And um, one year at, this is a middle school course concert, a family came, and it, we do it at the community college, we did it at the community college, um, they came, they brought like a KFC dinner, and that whole family was eating KFC in the middle of the course concert, and um, that was just very disrespectful, because um, I don't know if they even allowed food in that auditorium, they might have allowed water, but I don't even know if they allowed food, and if they did, they brought KFC, and they were eating their chicken and their biscuits and whatever the heck they brought, their mashed potatoes, 
in the, in the middle of the chorus concert, and it was very distracting, and um, it, it made a lot of performers and uh, the chorus teacher very mad. <laughs> so, hopefully you won't be taking KFC, but that is just definitely something you, that was just my little exaggerated example. Don't yell at the performers. Um, yeah, don't do that. I noticed this more at dance recitals, like informal ones, when like dancers come out on a stage and their friends are yelling, go so and so, you're awesome. Um, I mean, some places like it's okay to do that, I guess. Like I know, like one of my old studios, we always did that, and that was just what you did to show your support. Um, besides buying an ad in the program, <laughs> but um, definitely don't do that at a classical performance. Um, it's really a distraction. And um, I know definitely when people yelled my name, it would be a distraction to me because I'd be dancing the whole time. Who called my name? Like, just wondering that and being totally distracted about that. So, um, just don't don't yell in the middle of performance. And a good idea is if you have small children, um, like a baby, like a really young baby, you know, that cry a lot or make a lot of noise, you might uh, want to be careful when bringing them, if you even bring them at all, because they can be considered a distraction. Um, I know a lot of people hate it, even in movies, when people talk in movies. Um, now imagine having, like, a baby crying their head off. So if it's, like, a scary performance or something, or it's, like, considered a PG-13 performance, you might not want to bring your small kids, you know, because we don't want them crying and screaming. It's going to make a lot of people mad, and they're going to complain about it, and you might end up being escorted out of the theater. So keep that in mind. Um, don't come dressed in street clothes, um, especially to formal perform per per performances. Um, this can offend people because, um, especially um, in certain parts of the country and in other countries in the world, it it mainly other countries, but in certain parts of this country, like I like I said, I live in the Hicks, or I live in the Hicks, I live with the Hicks, you know. So I, you don't see many people wearing formal stuff, but um, I've been to other places where you know it's very formal and. Um, especially in other countries where people dress formal pretty much every day, it can be really offending if you come in overalls or, you know, a t-shirt and jeans. You know, you need to come in, you know, at least dress pants and, like, something nice. So, that is it today for my audience etiquette. And so, technically, this is not performing etiquette. That's what I titled it, and that's what I called it, but I'm going to call this audience etiquette. So, that's what I'm going to title the video, and, um, I will make a performer etiquette video next week and have that next Friday. So I will see you guys later and make sure to get the news around that I am now posting on my channel until the dance club is back up. Okay, thanks guys. Bye. Oh my god, it's gal just OMG. Double H K P. Oh my gosh. OMG girl. Mm-mm.